good evening. Gonna do another little something different. I'm not gonna play any flute. Um, well, hello, Dusty. He's got, you know, he's a movie star now. He was in one of our films. Well, in Idaho, so I guess he thinks he needs to be in the middle of it. But he's probably just wanting treats from me. I might put a little bit of background in behind this, but uh, sitting here playing flute, I'm not going to do. Um, again, my memorization is not real good. Uh, we won't get into those reasons why. But uh, very big, big subject. I'm going to more talk of the past, give you some history. Uh, get to the end, and I'll mention some things. But um, dealing around the buffalo, it surprises me still how many people don't know a lot about the buffalo and the indigenous people. So, right up front, the first thing I want to talk about real quickly is buffalo and bison is the exact same animal. And bison is really the correct word to use. But uh, what it amounts to is, is uh, the misnomer of it, was it uh, goes way back uh, when the white culture arrived, you know, and uh, they came across the Atlantic, of course, they, uh, when they called it a buffalo, the reasoning behind that was in Africa, they compared it to the buffalo, the water buffalo. So they just named it said the same. Now, I don't know. I personally think there's a big difference between them. But uh, that's exactly what happened is they called it a buffalo because of the water buffaloes in Africa. So, but the correct name is actually bison. In the English language, there's many, many through the uh, tribes, the indigenous peoples, that uh, in their language, there's of course a word for buffalo there. And again, this could be a huge subject in itself in talking just about that. But uh, right up front, it is really a bison. Uh, but buffalo and it are the same animal. So, you know, the American buffalo, uh, definitely a, a symbol and great importance to the indigenous people uh, in this country in the past and of the present, both ways. Again, I mentioned I'm going to talk a lot of kind of a history, well it is, it's history about, and it's just a smidget, smidget that I'm even going to talk about on that. It's a huge subject but just give you a little bit of education uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and the idea of the uh, American Buffalo in, the, in connection with the indigenous people uh, serves as a reminder of the greed when the white came over and what it cost us because uh, basically it was almost wiped out by the hunting and leaving the meat to rot on the, on, out on the plains even. Uh, they wanted the tongue and maybe some hide but for their own clothing. But also they, it was wiped out to take away from the indigenous people, Plains Indians, uh, indigenous, the indigenous people's needs 
It was everything. It was everything. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull down a picture and put in the, this film that's going on here of um, all the parts of the breakdown. I don't know how easy it'll be to read it, but showing you how it was all used. So, of course, it meant many different things to, uh, and uses and across all of the indigenous people. And we're not going to, again, break it down to any one particular one here. I'll give you some basic, some general information. And I hope you get a little bit of under, better understanding of how important the bison, buffalo, were to the people. So, with creator and creation of life, the morning star, the sun, the moon, and our mother earth combined with the talents to give birth and hope to the indigenous. And the sun was, if the sun was a dispatcher of wisdom and warmth, then the buffalo was the tangible and immediate proof of them all. For out of the buffalo came almost everything necessary for their life, including their religious rights, spiritual rights, religious I don't really like using, but it's an understandable word to you all out here to the world. And that connection is through the great spirit, the creator, creation. And through the buffalo was a means of also a communication then and even today of that connection between creator and creation. In short, again, the buffalo is the life of the indigenous Plains Indian uh, nations, pardon me, Plains nations. Understandably, you should grasp that the major part of the indigenous life was surrounded and orientated with the buffalo herds. They moved with them during all but the winter months. The buffalo habits and kinds were studied intensely by the indigenous people. And in time, the indigenous put virtually every part of the beast to some Unitarian use. In fact, it is almost astoundingly, astoundingly, dis, oh, pardon me. In fact, it is almost astoundingly to see the graphic breakdown of the use uh, of that buffalo. And again, I'm going to try and see uh, if I can get a picture clear enough that you'll be able to see that. How they use the hide, the organs, the the muscles, the, the tendons, the, uh, the hooves, the horns, all of that. And there are several matters of magnitude to be considered about the indigenous and the buffalo. Again, I'm just a very small, small particle almost that I'm even going to be talking about here. I'm going to put at the end also some places, addresses that you could look for on the internet and then Google search on your own and learn more. First, there's a matter of the Buffalo place and the sphere of the indigenous uh, spiritualism. Unfortunately, since this function is connected to so many aspects of the indigenous ways of life, uh, that could be a topic uh, completely on its own for each of the nations. Uh, again, I just hope I can kind of give you a tiny rounded out snapshot, a particle of, of knowledge here. Second, a, a visual display of the infant use made of the buffalo is essential. Again, I've said that, and I will do my best to give you a good picture of that. 
uh, and it should give you a better impression if I can give you that picture. So third, uh, the indigenous also uh, provided fresh and succulent grass for the herds by burning off the areas of prairie uh, in regular intervals to promote new growth, to bring the bison back and keep them close to them to where they were living. So they didn't have to go hundreds of miles to try to find them. So burning off the grass, we did. Like farmers do it today. But back then, we did it. So you can say we were the first in this land to burn off grasses to get better grass growing, better crops, nourishment to the ground. Fourth, if buffalo is used in the name of a man or a woman, it is believed that this person would be essentially strong. Through a name itself is not the guarantee of automatic transformation. A buffalo person, you know, would ha has to fulfill up to those duties and form or way of walk of life. In short, this word buffalo within a name describes the powers of that man or woman or of a society that has buffalo used. I'm definitely not a position of anywhere around a holy person, but I'm going to make some mentions here. Holy men who saw buffalo and the vision during and which they were called to the practice of medicine would seek thereafter to commune with the Great Spirit through the buffalo. This might be done by prayers spoken to living buffalo and thus sent through them to creator creation or by ritualistic, pardon me there, use of the buffalo parts such as the skull, still being used today in many ways the skull we use. And then too, their uh, medicine bundles would always feature parts of the buffalo and or stones associated in the mind of the holy man with the buffalo. And as I mentioned, no disrespect here, and I do not that know that walk of life, uh, but I know of some things I've been told. And then the Plains tribes, they had special songs, which they believed would make the buffalo approach their camp areas. And all the tribes had dreamers and holy men who would conduct secret rituals and then prophesize where the buffalo were most plentiful. Uh, holy men of the tribes used buffalo skulls, as I've mentioned, uh, ritual designs to entice the herds. And the first carcass in a buffalo hunt uh, would be sacrificed uh, to the creator and creation and feed other animals and give thanks for the buffaloes giving their life for all of their needs. There are tales finding uh, a horned toad and asking it where the buffalo are and then place on the ground to see which way they turn. Uh, then there's another use for the horny toad is to, if you find one, is to pick it up and a little prayer, put it back on the ground and uh, watch which way it turns. It's going to point toward water where there is moisture. So it uh, doesn't tell you exactly, but uh, there's you'd still have a general path of where you know to, to look for water. Uh, speaking generally, when you're considering the energy put into buffalo calling, it should be recognized 
that there were many reasons to want the buffalo herds to come close to your camp. First, of course, the transportation problems, uh, the, and then the weight of the buffalo, and the quantities of meat went on a buffalo hunt, and uh, just the hides and taking them, and the weight of those, and it was also much safer to hunt close so you didn't cross over into lands that you were not protector of another nation of people. There is no, of course, way to know exactly in the old days of how many buffalo were in this lands. Uh, they throw out a range of from around 60 to 75 million head of bison in this land. Then, as late as the 1830, white hunters guessed that 40 million were left. That is a very low number in comparison. And all the larger herds lived on the plains, and smaller ones also ranged from uh, northern Georgia to Hudson Bay, and from the Appalachians to the Rockies and beyond. Uh, the bison, buffalo of North America were not all of the same color or size. The plains type, with which everyone is familiar, was not the largest. The wood buffalo found in small herds in the eastern parts of the United States and Canada was slightly larger. Although it grazed on the open prairies in the summer, it generally sought the protection of the woods in the winter. Another, another type was less common was the uh, mountain buffalo of the Rockies and Pacific Coast region. It was smaller, but more fleet than the uh, but more fleet than the plains bison was. Unfortunately, both the wood and the mountain buffalo became extinct before scientists could learn much about them. The need for the grass and the water kept the buffalo on the move most of the time because they would eat it up. After a herd had consumed the grass on one part of the range, it was forced to move to fresh horse foliage. With luck, about every third day the animals would come to water and did their drinking mostly at night. Hunters said that when a herd left a river and started up a canyon, the sound was like a distant thunder and often could be heard for miles. I have been fortunate enough to see, I don't know how many there were, but uh, go running across uh, a pasture. Uh, they were fenced in. But uh, the rumble, yeah, it was a thunder. And the ground shook under my feet. It, it's beautiful. It just put chills up, up your spine. Uh, some early explorers believed that the herds made long seasonal migrations, moving from south to north in, uh, in the spring and returning in the fall. Others maintained that the herd uh, movements were more local. Ordinarily, in the old days, the herds moved at a very le leisure pace, with each animal nibbling at the turfs of grass as they went along. Yet the buffalo was easily frightened, and sudden movement, sound, unusual odor could cause terrifying and uh, crashing stampede. Uh, Wind-blown leaf, the bark of a prairie dog or the passing shadow of a cloud but the entire herd definitely would move if they smelt a human the color of buffalo's coat varied also with its age and from geographical areas to another some southern buffalo were tanny and others were almost black Further north, one might find an occasional blue or moose-colored buffalo, or even 
a spotted one. Didn't know that. I had never seen a spotted one or heard of a spotted one. Rest of all, of course, was the albino, the white buffalo. That could be another complete full story. But uh, we'll make comment here about the uh, white buffalo uh, calf beliefs with the Lakota people. Sue. Uh, way of life, the pipe. To look it up because that is an education on its own. Making one more comment here about the white buffalo, and I might bring it up more, but uh, the National Bison Association of today uh, they say just one out of every 10 million buffalo born are white, and again, they are very very, very, very sacred to the indigenous people. A white animal of any sorts is very sacred to the indigenous people. Uh, full and healthy uh, buffalo youngster could increase in size around 400 pounds. And its coat is long and shaggy and thickened with heavy wool against the rigors of the cold season that would be coming forth. A two-year-old buffalo were called two teeth. I found that interesting, didn't know that. Having two full teeth at that age. And just before they reached the second year, their horns emerged beyond their thick hair and commence to curve. At that age, the tips of the horns were blunt, so they were also called blunt horns. And of course, we all know there's exceptions to any rule or anything we see. As they pass their second year, their horns continue to curve and three-year-olds were known as curved horns because of the short, small, curved horns. Small-built buffalo was usually the name applied to the four-year-olds, but they were also called four-teeth. Robes taken from these in January and February were considered the best of all the hides. They were not too thick, and the hair was fluffed out, silky, and thick. At the age of six, cows were known as big females, which meant they were mature animals. The bulls of this vintage were called horns not crooked because of their fine polished horns, which resulted from hours spent in polishing them by rubbing against the low cut banks or trees. Sometimes the bulls uh, pawed down the upper sides of washouts and used the newly exposed and, and harder surface as a polishing material. Curved horns are both male and female. The bulls of this variety had short horns with accentuated curves, while the cow horns can be thin, long, and curved. The tips which can be curved out of sight into the hair, makes curved horns, cows, look as though they have big curved earrings. These are things of past and of today.